Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial video. My name is Dusty. Today we're going to be talking about Adobe InDesign. I'm in Adobe InDesign 2022. Doesn't really matter if you're using a newer or older version. All of these tools overview should be very similar for whatever you're using. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So First thing you're going to see is the user interface when you open up a document in InDesign. So what you'll see is when you go to File, New, and then Document is where you're going to create a new document, you're going to see this here. Basically, this is just you setting up your canvas for you to lay all of the design elements out. So uh, normally what you'll have is you will have like some print options here, like the normal letter size and different legal sizes. But if you know the exact size that you need, you can go over here and select the measurement, whether it be pixels, points, millimeters, whatever you need if you work in magazines, and then just give that a size over there. We're just going to select the letter size here just to make it simple, and then just give your document a name. So go ahead and name the document here. Once you've got all of this set up, just click the blue button there that says create. And as you can see, we now are presented with a brand new page. Now, it's very easy to navigate the workspace in InDesign. Uh, if you do command or control minus or plus on your keyboard, you can see I'm zooming out and I'm zooming in. I do this a lot when working with like YouTube thumbnails in Photoshop where I go and I zoom out and see what it'll look like, but very easy to get around. And then you can use the hotkey H on your keyboard uh, to pull up the, uh, the hand there. So if I use the hotkey H and if I go over to my other little project here, I can use the hand to kind of drag around on my document if you have multiple pages. So this is, uh, my wife's a teacher, and this is a little attendance sheet that I was working on for her. And you can see here that I have multiple pages. So if I scroll down here, you'll see a couple of pages down below, and then I'll show you how to do all of that. But let's start from the beginning. So what you see here, this is your tool set right here. These are your tools. Uh, within anything in Adobe InDesign, this can be clicked and dragged anywhere on your desktop or monitor, whatever you want to say. And then if we go up to where you see window, click on window, you will see all of these options here. So if you're looking for pages, you can click on pages. That'll bring that up. If you're looking for layers, that will be here. So anything that you don't see that you want to do within InDesign, if you go to window, you'll find all of that here. Anything with a checkbox is what you're seeing visibly. Anything without a checkbox may be hidden under right here, one of these kind of layered options on the right-hand side. And then if we go to workspace, you can see we're going to have a bunch of different types of workspaces. The one I'm working in is digital publishing. You may see one here that says essentials. Click on these and find one that works best for you. So as you can see here with this one, uh, the tool you know, the toolbox looks a little different. You're only seeing pages over here on the right. So find where, you know, where you're going to see everything that you want to see. But the, what I found is you don't want this to be so cluttered to where you're seeing all of these tools that you're getting confused. Okay. So understand that you, you don't want to do that. Also, another thing you're seeing all of these blue and pink lines. If I click on an element within InDesign, we're going to see a whole bunch of lines come up. These are called alignment grids or alignment lines to help you stay and know where the center is both vertically and horizontally when moving objects around on the screen. So let's say I want to center this on the page here. I will wait for that pink line to come up and boom, I know it's centered. And then if I want to center it over here in the middle of the page, I'll wait for the other line to come up that's pink. And as you can see, that's going to be centered in the entire page with anything in Adobe InDesign, you can hit Command or Control Z, as in zebra, to undo said action. Um, also, another really quick hotkey that I want to teach you is if you have this selection tool, which by the way is V, you'll learn that you'll want to use the hotkeys a lot. So H brings up the hand, as I just mentioned, where you can drag around the screen, but V brings up the selection tool, and this is where you will select things and drag them around the screen. The other tool is the direct selection tool that looks very similar here, except it's a lighter color. If we select that, we can also drag things around, but it gives us more kind of, we can kind of focus in on something uh, and really start doing it that way. But I always use the selection tool or the V key on your keyboard to drag whatever it is around on my page or document. All right, so we covered the first two tools here. Another hotkey that I want to make sure I tell you guys about 
is right here if we have an object selected like the word attendance here if i hold down shift command or control on a pc and then drag to the right or left it's going to automatically resize that object it doesn't matter if it's an image doesn't matter if it's a text whatever it may be as you can see that box getting larger if i release that you can see it's gotten bigger but if i hold shift and command or control and then drag to the left here it'll get smaller again that's just a nice little hot key uh, or quick key to understand exactly what you're going you know to, to help you more quickly and efficiently navigate your workspace all right the next thing that i want to show you is up here under view if we go to view we have something called overprint preview if we click on overprint preview you can see all of those little guiding lines there are removed and it shows you what it's going to look like when printed obviously you're not going to see these pink lines but it's showing you uh, the printable area is what that is there so understand that viewing it in, in overprint preview for me i like doing that periodically that way i can see more and the lines get a little convoluted so those are the the things that you need to focus on going forward all right now we're going to go tool by tool the next thing we see here is the page tool if we click the page tool here we're going to see where if we click that it's going to allow us to adjust the size width and height of our pages now i don't recommend doing this unless you really know the dimensions if it's something customized that you need but you can do that and speaking of pages you're probably wondering how do i insert a page how do i manage my pages the easiest way of doing this right here is go to layout pages and then add page but as i showed you earlier if we go to window and then right here where you see pages it's over here on the right so go to window and then pages to make sure that you see it and i'm going to drag this over here just so you can see it a little better uh right here under pages you're, you're going to see your layout here so we have a, our, our main page here which, which they call that the parent page and then every sub page below that if we right click here you see an option where we can just insert pages or we can move pages around so if we go to insert pages it's going to add a page after the parent page and you can decide hey i want to add one or maybe you want to go ahead and add two pages and then just go ahead and click ok and as you see that adds two pages if you want to move these pages around you just click and hold those pages find where you want them over here in the layout and that will then move that page exactly where you want it and it'll have page numbers below that way you don't get too confused when you're working with the project here in InDesign so that's kind of a little bit about pages uh, I've got another tutorial showing you more in depth uh, for that as well now the gap tool uh, this I wouldn't get too far into this tool just yet but this helps you get spacing properly uh, within InDesign between two different options so it's showing you kind of the gap here and it, actually if you hold here it'll show you in inches exactly how far this is great for publishing as you can see anything here on the left or right side or between different elements a little arrow will come up and if I click and hold it'll actually show me exactly the dimensions between said objects great for publishing um, and, and different things of that of the sort next we have content collector and content placer tool content collector just allows you to uh, collect page items using the, the the tool and then place them using the placer so like if we go and select an item uh, let's say we select you know whatever the image or item may be and then we select the placer and then basically as you can see now that object comes available and i can just click and place that wherever it may be this again is great for navigating and finding where you may want to put stuff on the page next we have the type tool or text tool and the hot key for that is t if you click and hold on any tool with a arrow in the lower right hand corner it will drag out other sub tools within that tool so there is also a type on a path tool that's fairly self-explanatory if you have like a, a circle and you want to type around the circle choose that type on path tool but for the type tool itself it's very easy so i'm going to go to one of our blank pages here and then use a type tool if we click and hold and drag out we will create a text box as you can see it's just like a word processor we will have the cursor begin to blink where we can start to type and then you just start typing whatever you want to type now you can see with an indesign it's going to have a a box around it now if you're wanting to align something in indesign it's going to align the box or the frame around the object so the text is up here but the box is much bigger so if we click and hold you can see the alignment grid is lining it up for the box that text is not going to be centered so what i like to do is i like to click and hold shift and the letter f so shift f will fit that box to my text and then if i just zoom in a bit you can see here 
Now the box is just that, and I can click and hold, and I can find the center of the page right here. And now if I zoom out, you can see that the text itself is going to be centered because the box is going to be bounding to the text. Very, very simple. The same trick works, shift command or control here, and then just drag, that will actually make that text bigger or larger, or you can just double click into it, open up the type tool again, and then if you don't see the ability to format, again, go to window, and then up here where you see something that says font or format, okay? It's gonna be very easy to find anything that you need here uh, to, to, to find that. So you can see styles, and then we got character styles here, and all of that stuff can be can be kind of arranged the way that you want it. I'm going to go back to uh, my digital publishing workspace and then you can see up here below uh, at the, the, the upper portion of my screen, it now looks like a, a word processor where I can go and I can select different, you know, fonts and different things that I've selected. Now, if you change the font, you may see that it changes the, the box as well. So you may need to extend that and then shift F to go ahead and make that where you want it. Again, the type tool is very powerful. You can do a lot of things with it. Uh, but normally if you have your selection tool selected and then just double click into something here, it'll actually bring up the type tool again where you can go here and change the color. You can see I have my text color here and my background color. If I click into that, it'll bring up a, a wonderful color grid where I can select any color that I may want to select on the grid. Again, you choose whichever one that you want and then that will change the text to that color. Next, we have our line tool. This is very self-explanatory. If we click into it, you'll see a crosshair come available to you. Click and hold and drag to the right or the left or at an angle, and that will draw a line. Now, I'm going to undo that and show you a little trick. If you hold down shift and go left to right, no matter what you do, it will always be in a direct line, okay? That, if you're having trouble drawing straight lines, InDesign makes it easy. Left to right, hold down shift, and that draws you a perfectly straight horizontal line. Now, up in the formatting section here, we can change the actual stroke of that to make that line thicker. As you can see, if I hit the up arrow, it'll go thicker, down arrow, it'll go less thick. And then I can also change the color of that line by just going here and finding a specific color that I may want. Let's say I want it to be a nice red color, just like that, and I am good to go. Any element within InDesign, whether it be a line, text, or image, will be able to be manipulated and drug around with the selection tool. Just understand that, okay? So go here, drag them wherever you want them, put the line under your text, and then you can select them by clicking and holding. That is the wonderful thing about InDesign. This is probably my favorite feature, is I can click and hold somewhere, drag my selection, and look at that, it selects everything that I've drug my mouse over. Beautiful thing. All right, so next we have our pen tool. Click and hold, you're gonna see add anchor, delete anchor, and I'll cover those briefly, but not very in-depth. That's really deserves its own video. The pen tool allows you to add different points on the screen, as you can see that I'm doing here, to draw and create customized shapes or objects. Now, most people utilize Adobe Illustrator for this, but if you do want to do some design elements here within InDesign, you can do so by utilizing the pen tool. Once you've created whatever you want with the pen tool, we can go here and select the add anchor point. And basically an anchor point just adds a little dot to the line. That way, when we grab our selection tool here, if we click into something, we can manipulate that, the subject, whatever we've created there. So there's my triangle, my little object there. And again, you're going to be centering and adjusting this to the box itself, not necessarily the uh, object that you've drawn, okay? So that's what the pen tool does. Next, we have the pencil tool, smooth and erase tool. Very self-explanatory. The pencil tool just allows you to draw, you know, different uh, things here on the screen. So if you are an artist, the pencil tool is going to be your best friend. I recommend like a, a Wacom tablet uh, or an Apple pencil uh, to, to do it justice, right? But you can use the pencil tool uh, to create any types of, you know, objects and shapes that you want to create. And then any, again, grabbing that with uh, the selection tool as well. So that's going to be what you do with your pencil tool. Now, the frame tool for me, uh, not necessarily the, the rectangle frame tool, but any frame tool is probably one of the most powerful features within InDesign. If I select the rectangle frame tool, I can go here and I can create a recta rectangle. With anything in InDesign, if I hold down shift here, it's going to create a perfect square. Just a little pro tip for you there. All right, so we're gonna create a, a square frame here. Now, this frame here is going to be where you can put something inside that frame. So I'm going to grab an image now and I'm going to drag it into this frame and show you what that looks like. 
All right, so I've got an image here in my downloads, and uh, it's a good time to show you exactly kind of how to do that. So if we go to File up here and then Place, so File, Place, it will allow us to select an object from our computer. So I'm going to select this beautiful picture of a cat here. And then you can see, because I had the frame tool selected right here, it's putting that image only inside that frame. Now you're like, wait a minute, Dusty, it doesn't, it doesn't look right. Well, if we right click on the frame, go to Fitting, and then go to Fit Content Proportionately, look at that, it's going to fit the frame perfectly. Now, if you don't like the white bars top and bottom, what I like to do is go to right click here again, go to Fitting, and then go to Fill Frame. So this will fill the frame proportionately. And then if you double click inside there, you'll see the hand tool come available to you and the dark orange kind of border. This allows us to adjust that frame, adjusting exactly where that image is going to be inside said frame. So now we have this nice frame right here. Okay, just like so. We can adjust it, move it around. Beautiful. The frame tool is your friend. All right. Next, we have a, the shape tool, very easy. You have your ellipse, rectangle, polygon tool uh, with rectangles, very similar. If you hold down shift, it will always be a perfect square, okay? And you can adjust any element you create uh, as you, you know, with anything up here in the, in the formatting bar, you can make it thicker. You can adjust the way the lines are if you want them to be kind of, uh, you know, if you want to create a frame that looks kind of like a frame there. Uh, and the same thing works for the ellipse and polygon tool as well. Next, we have right here, the, right here the scissor tool. This basically allows you to cut different areas and subjects out of an object. Next, we have our free transform tool. I'm not really going to go into detail on this one. Just know if you, you, you want to move some objects around, make them larger, smaller. Uh, you can do so here with the rotate, scale, and shear tool. All of that will be done there. Next, we have our gradient swatch tool. If you want there to be a gradient from one color to another on an object, you can select that, select the object, and then you can add a fill color and have a gradient with that as well. The only other tools that I want to show you today, uh, right here you have a note tool. If you select the note tool and then right here on an object, you can just click in. It'll add an option over here for you, the designer, to see the notes. So you can add your note here. And when you hover over that note, you'll see the note that you created. So if you have a very large project, it's great for that. Next, we have the eyedropper tool. One of my favorite tools, you got a color theme eyedropper and measure tool. The eyedropper tool allows you to click on a color and brings up that exact color. So if you see here, I can click on the cat's eyes right there and it'll actually pick up that blue color of the cat's eyes. It's a wonderful tool. I've already showed you the hand tool here. Uh, again, the hotkey for that is H. If you click and hold with the hand tool, it'll actually navigate you around your subject matter here. It's a great way of navigating easily and quickly around your document. And then you have your zoom tool. So with the addition symbol there, it's going to uh, you know obviously zoom in. But if we go ahead and right click, you can zoom out or zoom in depending on what you wanna do. And with this tool, you can actually right click and then go to actual size and it'll show you kind of the actual size of that. There's some really cool stuff, even the entire pasteboard to show you exactly everything here on the screen. Again, it's a very customizable workspace. So you can drag the toolbar to the right, to the left. And then over here, I'm gonna bring this over to the center of the screen for you to see. Let's say you can't find something, like you're wanting to look for layers or pages or whatever it may be. If you just click into one of these, it'll flare that out and it'll show you exactly what you want. And then you can hit the little right arrows to put it back in line here on the stack. I call this my stack or design stack, whatever you want to call it, right? And then if you want to get into, say, layers, you just click on that and then you can click and hold on that and then you can bring that and drag that wherever you want. And as you see, whenever I drag something from the toolbar onto a specific area here, if there's already a tool there, it'll actually give me the option to lock that to that specific area. That way, if I know I'm working with layers and colors together, I can click between the two right here. And I can always X out of it by hitting the X there in the left hand corner. So again, very customizable, very easily to navigate. Wonderful, wonderful thing. All right, in all of my tutorials, I do a FAQ comment, which is a pinned comment below. If you have any questions, which you probably will, put those there and myself or someone in the community will get to those. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.